this thing on? If you like rock music, punk, metal, or blues, then you've come to the right place because we like it too. It's sound check. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Soundcheck, the rock and roll and alternative music podcast here at Central Michigan Life. My name is Michael Livingston, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host. Andrew Mullen. How are you all doing today? Doing pretty good. Uh, You won't hear anything from Ben today because he's going to be taking the back seat for this episode. Uh, We have a very special episode topic planned, but first we have to introduce a very special guest. Today, we got one of my best buddies of all time. I've known him since I was in diapers, Mr. Brody Britt. How you doing, man? (laughs) To quote Funky Kong, yo, yo, yo. (laughs) (laughs) Tell the listeners what you do on campus. Um, I am the 91.5 music director. I am the 2B host of Summit Sessions Live, and I do a couple other things to help with the uh, media scene, with whether it be movies, TV, music around campus. And since you're involved so much in the media scene, we thought you'd be a perfect guest for this episode because it's hidden in the mitten part two, baby. Uh, yeah. It's where we talk about some local Michigan bands, give them some exposure, give them some much needed praise, especially during the coronavirus pandemic. Um, Andrew, what do you got to say? The coronavirus sucks, I guess what I have to say. I don't, I don't take. know. I, did, I, did, take. I didn't have a yes, I know. Um, no, I didn't have a bit prepared for this. But yes, um, last uh, semester we did a episode called Hidden in the Mitten. Um, we, we looked at local bands from around Michigan that you may not be aware of, either if you live in the Mitten State or if you live outside of Michigan. And yes, if you live outside of Michigan, it's called Hidden in the Mitten because if you've never noticed, I don't know if you've never, I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but the bottom, the bottom half of the state of Michigan looks like a mitten. So there you go. Thank it, God it, we it, have you here, man. What a great <laughs> reporter you are. <laughs> yeah. Music like, and geography. I'm so I'm learning I so know. much. You are learning so much. I, I I could go on about geography all day, but no, we're talking about music here. And um, yeah, like you said, Michael, band, local bands, and we've mentioned this on the show before. Local bands are struggling a lot with um. Uh, with, with this pandemic right now, you know, struggling to find new ways to get revenue. Uh, obviously, they want to keep making music, but obviously that gets harder and harder as the uh, pandemic keeps hitting and they can't play live shows anymore. I mean, we don't need to go into all this. Any Anyone who is even slightly into music knows what the state of the music industry is right now. So since we live in the state, since we, um, uh, you know, since we at least are kind of in touch with uh, some of the, you know, the bigger local bands here in uh, the state. Why not uh, highlight them? Let's give them a little bit of love, you know, highlight some bands that you may not know about and uh, kind of help get them some much needed exposure during this time. Yeah. So if you're one of our uh, 25 audience members, please take some time. Uh, look up these bands on Spotify, especially on Bandcamp. Donate a little money, buy their records, uh, do whatever you can to just support the local music scene um, in Michigan. And uh, yeah, it's, it's some hard times and these bands need some love. Before we hop into the episode topic, uh, you can follow us on Twitter at SCheckOfficial. You can follow me at Michael C. Liv. You can follow uh, Andrew. Can follow me at Andrew Mullen4. Brody, do you have a Twitter you want to plug or any social media? I do somewhere out there, but I don't know. <laughs> okay. You can find Brody on Tinder. Uh, <laughs> you can't, actually. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, uh, but anyway. Yeah, I'm yes. banned. There you go. You, there you go. Uh, oh, we got the first band on deck here, and this is actually one that Andrew brought up. So yes. you can go ahead and take it away, my man. All right. Well, actually, before I want to get into this, uh, something, one thing I do kind of want to discuss with you guys before we jump in, because I, because I'm just kind of curious. Um, you know, looking at the Michigan scene right now, I don't know. I, I'm not. I don't think I'm as in tune as you two are. So the question I kind of want to pose before I start talking about my band is. Uh, what what genres what, what 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 styles of music do you think um 
is kind of big in you know, kind of big in the underground scene right now with Michigan. You know, I don't know. Um, is, is it hip hop? Is it is it emo? Is it like kind of emo revival? I don't know, Michael Brody. What do you guys what do you guys what do you guys think about that? Uh, I mean, just from what I've seen, I think in terms of like DIY like shows, I mean, it's definitely a lot of like indie punk emo adjacent stuff. But I think I think like if we were to look hard, I think we'd find a lot of like DIY hip hop artists on SoundCloud and such. But, but in terms of like house shows, I would say definitely the 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 emo punk uh, indie sort of side. Yeah, I would definitely echo that. Um, just, you know, under our umbrella of rock music and alternative music that we discuss on this show, um, the, I think the parts you really want to pay attention to is what's going on in the how, like the basements of Ann Arbor and the basements of Lansing. Um, a lot of DIY, just a couple amps with a very intimate setting. Of, and it could be just someone playing an acoustic guitar. It could be a full band just making as much noise as possible. Anywhere from shoegaze to emo to... Um, pop punk, anything kind of under the map um, that's really easy to put together um, in a small, intimate setting. You know, you're not going to maybe you, you're not going to find like the extreme metal bands or um, a lot of stuff with really heavy production um, a lot of the times because that's not the venues that people are seeking out. I think when it comes to Michigan and Midwest music, um, you have to look at how the shows are usually put on. Of course, we don't have shows in the coronavirus pandemic. I'm just speaking from experience, but I think that's what you got to pay attention to. And that's what we're going to go through as we um, discuss each and every one of these bands. Yeah. I, I just wanted to ask that because, you know, I was thinking, you know, historically, if you look at Michigan, we got there. I mean, you have Motown. I think that is very much a, when you think Detroit or when you think Michigan, that is very much, oh, I just see Michigan thing. But and we also kind of had a lot of the early proto-punk bands, you know, the Stooges, the, uh, you know, um, MC5, the Rationals. Um, but, you know, outside of that, you know, it's like, you know, I mean, you have, you, there are some, there's some soul music, there's some rap, there's, you know, like you guys said, some underground, you know, alternative scenes. But there, the, I don't know if like Michigan beyond that stuff really has the identifiable sound. And I don't know, it's, it's just kind of interesting to see where, like what, because if you look through like what's on Bandcamp right now, for instance, on Michigan, I don't know if you can really notice any big trends on there. I mean, at least from my um, kind of perception. So, and just kind of looking what we, I mean, we, we have our own biases when it comes to like music, what we listen to. So a lot of what I think we presented here in this list is somewhat in the same ballpark. But I mean, hell, if you, if you go back to like, uh, like last episode and kind of compare and contrast the two, I think it's hard to find that common, um, that common sound that kind of unites Michigan together. So I don't know. That's, I, I was just a little curious um, what you guys had to say. I, I will agree from what I have seen a lot of the underground stuff does tend to lean more of that punk emo, uh, like indie rock sphere. Um, again, cause that's, uh, I think it's what a lot of smaller bands try to make nowadays, but I don't know. Um, it, it, it's just an interesting conversation to me. Well, sure. I think I think uh, with I think I actually a lot of places now lack identity music wise, and I think that's probably because of the internet. You know, because with the internet now anyone can listen to and post whatever they want. So it isn't like, oh, I saw this show and I want to make music like that. It's like, oh, I heard this on Bandcamp. I'd like to make music like that. So now that ev now that making music's a lot more accessible, I think that's why. I think that's why a lot of places, including Michigan, are lacking in identity. Yeah, personally. I think it, I think the the time of saying like, oh, I'm really into the California metal scene, or I'm really into the, you know, Nashville country scene is kind of over, uh, thanks to the internet. Simply just because you can hear anything you want on the internet, and you can pretty much emulate that or put your own spin on it, but make anything you want. And, you know, across the board, um, I think when, what we talk about today sounds very different from each other. So it's going to be interesting. Andrew, do you want to launch into your first band? Yes. Uh, speak, so speak with all that being said, I think uh, hopefully we can see that variety come to fruition here in our show. And I'm going to start off with a band um, <clears throat> actually right here. I know we kind of, 
formatted last time into like taking a road trip through Michigan. And, uh, well, our first stop, uh, we don't have to go very far, at least for us. Uh, we're going to stay right here in Mount Pleasant uh, with a band called Blister Sisters. Uh, I don't know when I really, there isn't really much, a lot of information about this band online. In fact, if I go to Spotify right now and I'll tell you how freaking hidden this band is in the mitten. Uh, yeah, according to Spotify, they have eight monthly listeners uh, <laughs> exactly eight uh yeah every, all their songs under a thousand uh lead the list under a thousand um I, their band camp page is fairly sparse there's only one release there uh but i so i came across this band because i write for for seam life i write this i've been writing this weekly article series called um Pandemic Pastimes, which you should go check out, seamlife.com. Uh, <laughs> this band uh, formed maybe like a few years ago, but they, it took a while for them to actually kind of release any music. In fact, their first release was in um, 2020. And that's how I kind of found out about them because I was for that article series. I think for one, a, 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 an installment of that a few weeks back, I was looking for like a band, to like a local band to highlight, like on, uh, you know, on there. And I came across their one and only EP. It's self-titled on Spotify. And I, I, I rather liked it actually. It was, it was, it was really interesting to hear something like this coming from Mount Pleasant. You know, it's, it, it it's, it's kind of slightly doomy, but not, it, it, it's, it's me. I would describe it as stoner as atmospheric stoner rock is the best way for me to describe this thing. Uh, it's you know five tracks long. Um, it doesn't take too long to get through. It's not the most. It's I'm not gonna sit here and pretend it's this perfect you know hidden gem. There are some flaws. I don't. The first the first song on here, user is is it mixed very well. The symbols are really loud, but I think it gets better as it goes on. I think uh, I really like the lead singer's voice, and uh, when it gets down to the final track, death blow, which I want Ben here to play. In, play a clip of here in a second it, it's it's got this really nice build throughout this it's got this simple kind of bass riff under underneath everything and the guitar just kind of spaces out in the background and everything just like it, it sound it just feels like you're kind of marching through like a desert and like this grand adventure movie it's got this feel i really like it um so yeah i mean as far as i know according uh because i spoke i i had an email conversation with the leader of this band uh, when I was writing that article and she pretty much all she said was like, yeah, we were just like either compile like former CMU students or a former CMU professor. I think it's in there. And uh, we kind of put this together, put it up, you know, during, during the pandemic. But right now, like they're as of right now, not really a thing at the moment. Cause I think they're like, some of them are here at Mount Pleasant. Some of them, some of the members are, in another state so with the pandemic who knows if they'll ever release anything again i hope so because i think this this ep shows some promise and i do hope we hear more from them but that's really all the information i have about this band uh ben if you want to kind of play a clip and i'm interested to hear what you two have to say about this that's a solid track i think uh i i will uh attest to what andrew said when i listen to the song the build-up does it does get louder it does get more intense it does get more abrasive but uh yeah i love the atmosphere that this uh band was able to put together 
um, all over this album. And it's, I think it's really awesome that there's little to nothing known about them. It just kind of came up and went away. You know, I wonder after this episode, if we'll be able to get in contact with them on social media um, to see if they're even still around. I don't yeah. even know they have social media. I, I, they might have a Facebook. I don't remember. Uh, we can, I, I know the singer does. I might be able to tag her in there, but uh, yeah, there, there's just really nothing on this band online. I don't, I think they were, to me, this, because when you listen to, again, there's, so, there's some sloppiness sometimes with production. Like the way this band kind of, way the music's written it just does sound like a bunch a group of friends kind of jamming in the garage and they they probably have been doing it for years and they just decided hey why not let's just put something out to the world and uh because because we can i mean that's just kind of like what this feeling is i don't know how much marketing they really uh were trying to do if any you know promotion they were trying to do for this for this uh ep and i don't know Paul, that's that's what i'm trying to do for them right now i give them a little bit of promotion so I really liked that a lot. That was, I thought that was really unique. Like, I think the, the atmospheric stoner, like sleep guitars, you know, matched really well with like her beach house kind of voice. And while the production was definitely sloppy, I think that kind of uh, helps with the uh, aesthetic a bit personally. So again, that was death blow by the blister sisters. A Mount Great Pleasant name, Band. by the way. Great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So, all right, that's all I have to say. I think Brody, you also have a map listen band project, whatever this I is. I do. Correct? The car is not going far. I don't know where the blister sisters live, but it's going to their house to frat row. And we're going to, to uh, rotten Burke. This is the uh, solo project of my uh, acquaintance, uh, Maxwell, Maximilian uh, rotten Burke. I uh, I met him in um, uh, audio classes in my be uh, my uh, cinematic arts class. Um, he's a really nice guy. He makes this uh, Beatles esque kind of lo fi psychedelic music. And while I don't know if the lo fi is aesthetic or because of constraints, uh, I think it's really unique. He's been releasing music since 2016. His first uh, two tracks were purely instrumental. He but then graduated to vocals in uh, 2018 and released this album, Zero Age Main Sequence, in February 2020. Uh, his most recent releases, however, have been with his, I think, his two housemates in the band called Chewy Lucas. Um, and they kind of just make whatever. I can't, they have this one song called Gone Fishing that I would definitely call outsider music. Um, and. And then they have another one uh, that is just kind of basic, um, kind of just like uh, kind of psychedelic. And then they made a short little punk EP. So he's still out there. And if you see him on the street, tell him Soundcheck sent you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear a little bit of Rotten Burke. If I, if I may, Andrew, let me take this one first, because Brody, you recommended me Ron Burke last year, and I had already had my experience through this album, and damn, it still holds up to this day. I mean, guys like this just make me think like, wow, I, I if, if he has this much talent at my age, I will never be able to do anything. <laughs> like, like, it's really good. I, I love this record so much, and like the, like, 
it seems like each song on this album has its own identity, its own flair, its own sort of personality. Mm -hmm. And like this one, like it, for some reason, like sends me into that like weird Johnny Depp remake of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. You know what I mean? Like that kind of vibe. <laughs> it's, that's a very it's not, unique review. That is also like that. a very bad vibe, Michael. I don't know. No, no, it's not because that I while that movie sucks, the uh, aesthetic and the trippiness still holds up. I, but yeah, the, this album definitely held up for me. Uh, all of that was pos positive criticism. Um, I'm looking to see what else uh, Max will put out in the future. Well, well, Michael, while your take on the Char and the Chocolate Factory remake is BS, um, did this no, this this record is not. I, I actually really like this. Um, this is um, this is why I'm glad we do these kind of episodes where we talk about you know lesser known bands. I would have never known about this for not if not doing this episode. This was a really cool album. It's usually my favorite thing you introduced to me, Brody, on this episode. Um, yeah, I really like like just again we're talking about atmosphere in the last thing i really like it here it's all these really trippy synthesizer noises mixed in with these really just just washed out reverbed guitars it's just i really i love it when someone because synthesizer can either be used to like ruin music basically like a lot of what was made in the 80s or it can just make some of the most interesting sounds you've ever heard and i think this is a one well, example of the latter i yeah, I don't really have much else to say on that. I think the, I think the music did the talking. I, I really enjoy this project. Um, I guess we can finally take a trip downstate then. Uh, I got the next band, and we're going back to Brody and I's stomping grounds. Good old Heartland, Michigan. Go Eagles. <laughs> nope. Uh, but yeah, we're, it's, uh, it's a small town in Livingston County, and uh, this is a project called Zilched. Um, from a girl that Brody and I actually went to high school with. Um, never spoken to her. Um, haven't reached out over the years, but um, Chloe Drowless is her name, and she started this awesome band in, uh, I believe, 2017. And um, she launched this, um, this awesome EP um, called Pulling Teeth um, that was really primitive. And, and Sorry, that was in 2018 where she put out Pulling Teeth. Um, and it's, it's kind of primitive in production, but you can tell her songwriting is starting to form and starting to come together in this really awesome and kind of like unsettling way. And then she put out Doom Pop this year um, and just completely uh, came into her own with this awesome shoegaze, uh, you know, like kind of noisy, uh, buzzy, um, you know, atmospheric music. Um, and, you know, I came across zilch just by word of mouth uh she's been featured in the uh detroit news metro times um a couple other news organizations and you know i can tell once this pandemic is over um hopefully chloe's got an awesome career ahead of her uh she's only got almost three thousand monthly listeners on spotify and you should definitely add to that number uh this song i'm gonna play for you is called blue doom um pretty great atmosphere we're about to get here uh very similar to what andrew played first so go ahead and bed give it a give it a play Um, I guess I'll go first because um, I actually did know about Sills before. Um, I, and I was really trying to think where I heard this because I, I think I, I want to say, I, Michael, you had introduced me to Zilch. I don't remember. I, I looked back because we used to make playlists for each other where we would just like throw artists each other's ways. And uh, I, I, I looked back to see if you'd added her to, to one of mine. You didn't. So 
I, I don't know where I first heard Zilch. I just know I remember hearing Pulling Teeth and really enjoying it, but not really looking too much else into her. I didn't know she because I, I only live probably about 10, 15 minutes south of, a, of, of Heartland. So I'm surprised I had never heard of her. Um, but no, this is this is some really cool music. I didn't know she released an album this year, and I was very happy you made me aware of that, Michael. Because yeah, she's really good. She's got this interesting you know, atmospheric show, uh, shoegaze. I have to call it shoegaze. It's my gimmick here. Uh, no, oh, I said it right. Oh my god, I said it right. Mm-hmm. Dang it. Yeah. Ah, you're off tonight, man. You're I off am tonight. off tonight. Damn it. Okay. Well, hey, streaks broken. I Andrews finally said the genre showgaze or shoegaze, whatever is it correctly. No matter. That's no matter. Uh, still, she's great. And I, I think, yeah, I agree with Michael. Everyone should really go check her out. And I, I think she has a, I, I do think she has a great career ahead of her. And hopefully she goes far once all, once the world stops burning. So any thoughts from Brody over here? Or would you uh, like to give it a pass? Oh, no, I like that. The guitars were really heavy i guess yeah i guess that would probably be a modern form of shoe slash show gaze um (laughs) but yeah that was that was interesting i don't know chloe i just know that she went to our school and you know good 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 are we allowed to say the cuss words on here (laughs) yes you can okay good 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 shit all right (laughs) go ahead andrew you're up next well um so I, again, I don't. I guess she's from Harlan. I thought she was from Detroit. That's what every uh, biography I saw of her said. But okay. Um, so we so whatever. We'll say Harlan for the fun of it. But luckily, we are going to Detroit anyways now. We're, we're finally hitting uh, uh, the big one here in Michigan, the big city that everyone knows. Uh, we got a uh, surf rock band. I guess is the best way to put this. Uh, we're very, we're, we're introducing a lot of artists you can describe as spacey, a lot of kind of psychedelic stuff, I suppose. And that's okay with me. I like this sound. Um, the band's called Mexican Knives. They formed in 2011. That's where I've seen, that's the year I've seen everywhere. So I'm just going to go with it. Um, they've made it, they've released a couple singles and albums throughout the years, uh, kind of sporadically. Um, really, they only have two full length EPs, Mexican Knives, and then an album with just called Roman numeral two, which is literally just the Roman numeral sign for two. So uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, this band's really, this band's really cool. Uh, they, they're not, they don't reinvent the real or anything. This is, this isn't anything groundbreaking. This is just some really fun surf rock. I actually have the first record here on final, which I had uh, Michael and Brody listen to. And I, I remember first seeing this on Bandcamp. You want to say theme here. Uh, uh, many years ago, and I think I came across this either used in a record store. It was being sold new for very cheap, so I'm like, yes, I'm gonna get that. And yeah, this 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 record's kind of stuck with me. I really I enjoy a lot of the songs on here, uh, particularly uh, you know Mexican Knives, uh, the, the title track on here, Beach Song, uh, TikTok, and Killer Snake being my favorite, which I, I'll Ben play a clip here in a second. But it, yeah, this band's really solid. Um, I, yeah, I, they they didn't need they didn't they didn't need some improvements on their first record. The mixing wasn't all that great, uh, it, it, especially on a song, especially on the song "Nightmare," which is good, but you can barely hear the vocals, and that was kind of my issue. Was really the mixing. Uh, I don't know if, how much they improved about that on the second record. I don't I'm not as familiar with that one, um, and. Again, that's as bad as much as I know. There's you can find a couple interviews that I from them. I think Freeps highlighted them at one point. I think the Detroit Metro Times was that. Where did I find it? So yeah, the Detroit Metro Times did like a, a profile on them in like 2014. So that that's a bit out of date now. Um, yeah, so there's not a lot of information. I don't even know if they're still together to be honest. Um, because they haven't really posted anything on their Facebook since uh, 2014. Sorry, sorry, 2018, uh, which is when their last album was released. And yeah, it's been it's been kind of radio silence. I actually sent them a Facebook message before the show started, saying, "Hey, are you guys still together?" And as of now, I've not received a uh, an answer on that. So if I do get something, I will. I don't know. Maybe you can insert it uh, here post production. And. If, no, I didn't get anything. Well, 
then let's just play the song. <laughs> I gotta kill a snake at the Texas line. It caused an earthquake in my daddy's mind. Hit plan on. I like that a lot. That was I do, good. I do too. I like the vibe on that one a lot. I, I just like uh, the energy that they brought to that performance. I like the guitar riff and, and how the basses match up. Um, production seems fine. I think the, the vocals being buried just kind of adds to the aesthetic. Um, I hope you do get in contact with these guys, Andrew. Love to have them on the show one day. You too. Uh, what did you guys think of the rest of the record? I, I liked it. Um, I think this goes for the last four artists, but I think the Bare Bones Productions complements them instead of instead of uh, taking away, and I really like it. And I thought it was a really great record. Uh, yeah, pretty much everything Brody said. Um, it, you know, it, with these bands, I find myself getting tired around the second half, but that didn't really happen with me. I. Um, when, as I was listening to it, I, I kept going through every song had its personality and um, it was consistent, you know, consistency is key, especially with these, uh, with these debut releases. So uh, yeah, definitely Mexican knives. Great band. Perfect. All right. Uh, Brody, you're up, right? Oh, yes. oh, this is what I've been waiting for, baby. These guys fucking go hard. I love great death. Holy H Hannah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you can swear on this show. It's okay. Holy fuck. These guys are really cool. Um, they were going to go a bit north from Detroit. We probably should have stayed. We probably should have stayed in Heartland because that would have made sense direction wise. But we're going, we're taking the scenic route. We're going back to Flint. These are a Flint band. And I'm not even. I'm not even going to tell you the genre because every review I've seen of them has had a different genre. I've seen emo. I've seen post rock. I've seen shoegaze. I've seen slowcore. These guys, and I think that is a testament to how original their sound is. And I am happy. And they're coming out of the emo scene. And I think 2010's emo, as much as I love emo revival, it is a very derivative scene. And I think these guys, al along with bands like Glass Beach and Weather Day, can show that emo can incorporate a lot of influences. And I can't say enough great things about this guy. These guys, New Hell is one of my favorite records of 2019. And I can't recommend these guys or their record enough. Uh, brief history, I think they started early 2010s they released a single with two songs on Bandcamp. then they released their album dixieland which has a picture of the dixieland flea market in i believe waterford and then they released new hell in uh 2019 and i think it is one of the greatest records of 2019 or on uh, uh, 2010s but also 2019 end of sentence
Yes. One day we will have a post rock episode and Brody, you can come back on that one to explain to us what it is. But yeah, um, I don't really know where to land this genre. Just listen or this, this, these guys just listening to them. Um, I'm, I'm usually, you know, I hear a lot of like um, death tones in it, kind of like that, that genre of rock where I usually try to stay away from it. But for me, it, it comes back to the vocal department. I don't know who the singer of this band is, but Holy shit. He is great. Um, I got yeah. two, two singers. Yeah. Yeah. They, they're just perfect on top of this music. Um, yeah. I, I would definitely, when I first heard this, I listened to a few more songs and the guitar riffs just stick to you for being so slow and so melodramatic. Um, you know, it's hard to be catchy when you take on that tone, but those riffs still stick with me um, all over new hell. So definitely I would, I would give great death a listen. Uh, same. I actually, this is another band I actually had heard of before this episode. Um, I found, uh, I think I, I don't know which song I found this first, but I remember seeing the album New Hell because over the summer I was kind of looking, cause I was looking through a lot of new music this summer because obviously pandemic and not really leaving the house, a lot to do. Why not look through some music? And, uh, I mean, I remember finding this album and, uh, really enjoying it. Um, yeah, I think they do have a really unique sound. I mean, post rock, post punk, whatever. I guess it's it's not it's definitely a sound in here, here. Twinges of like on like the quieter side of things, almost slightly folky to me. It's something else. Of elements I heard here too. So I guess I don't know post rock folk. I it's, sure why not? I don't know. It honestly, I kind of agree with you, Brody. There isn't probably much of a a, a sense in trying to label these guys uh into one uh genre i don't think it's really gonna work uh yeah i really like, that song in particular had a great build um i know i really like some of the hooks on songs like circles of hell and strange days uh those are tracks that i would personally recommend so yeah it's a great oh excellent well there you go yeah this is a great record and uh yeah great death i think they have a uh they could have a lot to offer sweet um we can go to my next pick um and we're going to kind of return to the detroit area still stick around there uh with this next artist called shortly and i really love doing these hidden Mid in the mitten episodes because i can shout out some bands that i saw at the music festival that happens right across the street from brody and i a subdivision called blood fest um it ended in 2018, but I was able to go to it twice. And that's where I discovered all my favorite Michigan bands from, you know, dog leg to anti ghost, you know, everything. I, it seems like I discovered there and I have fond memories of Brody and I sitting on the stage cross leg and next to their bassist, giving them high fives. Like that just shows you how intimate that, um, that venue was just in like an old high school. It truly was like a once in a lifetime experience. And shortly was one of those bands that kind of uh, stuck around with me afterwards. So just the backstory is um, this is the project of Detroit native Alexandria uh, Maniac. Um, I believe that's how you pronounce it. She's a multi-instrumentalist. She, she's great on the keys. She's great on the guitar, just creating these really um, pleasant, um, very, uh, charismatic but also very um you know these songs can tug at your heartstrings for sure um she songs she sings a lot about mental health uh, a lot about um you know just uh, struggling on a daily basis just the you know the the tiny things that uh, really get us emotional and yeah i i heard um i heard her the first time we were at blood fest and this song never really escaped me it's called finders keepers hope you guys like it
So yeah, just some nice, honest, some earnest songwriting. What do you guys think? I, I that's a good pick. That's probably my favorite off the uh, the album or EP. I forgot what it was. It's an um, EP. EP. Yep. Um, that's probably my favorite off of it. Um, and yeah, uh, she was. I she was really cool to talk to at Bloodfest. Um, if I had to compare it to one artist, I'd say Snail Mail. You know, kind of mm -hmm. like this healthy blend of like um you know singer songwriter emo this dream dreamy atmospheric stuff and just and especially in that song she has some pretty uh, intricate guitar work which is pretty cool and yeah shortly's a good band to look up um i like this uh Donnie, michael i think last hidden in the mitten uh you said i had the 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 best overall picks for the episode and quite frankly i think i gotta hand that to you this time i think oh. you brought some really good stuff Thanks, uh bro. yeah i really like shortly i mean everyone know everyone knows me knows i can be a little annoyed with uh indie pop you know i know that's a very broad term maybe it's a little overused but yeah typically i i don't know i i can get kind of annoyed by it but uh the, the indie pop that i I don't like tends to be seems to be very robotic sound very manufacturer it's just not really for me the indie pop that I really like is stuff like this it sounds very earnest very um you know vulnerable very just pleasant to listen to you know hint hint bands that sell out go to indie pop and don't realize that or but um yeah no this is this is great I think she has a great voice I think she she knows her way around melody really well um I don't know how much else she has outside this EP. I forget what was the name of this EP. Uh, Richmond. Richmond. Yeah, yes. it was. I don't know how much how much else she has outside this. Uh, but if she has more, I'm interested in looking. So I think she's uh, really good. Sweet. All right, Andrew. I think uh, my favorite pick of yours. Thank you for oh. that honor, uh, by the way. But this next one uh, might take the cake for me. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you really liked it, Michael. And this is honestly an episode where I really wish Ben was on, uh, who's, or at least he was here talking because of, I, I was actually, because I, before we started recording, I had asked if Ben knew this artist and I was very surprised to hear when he said he, to hear when he said he didn't, because I don't know if I've ever heard of more of a Ben pick in my life than this artist. And uh, quite frankly, uh, in fact, that he's local here to Michigan uh, too. Again, it was just kind of surprising to know him, but I'll, I'll, I'll quick uh, giving a bunch of, uh, I don't know, predisposition. Uh, we're taking a trip over to East Lansing now. We're taking a trip over to the East Lansing, Michigan scene with uh, folk artists, probably the best way to describe them, Wally Pleasant. Uh, he started making music around the early, late 80s, early 90s. I think early 90s is probably a better bet. Um, he, uh, I think he started making, I, I according, and this is, a lot of this is coming from Wikipedia. He does have a Wikipedia page. And uh, so take a lot of this with a grain of salt. Uh, it is Wikipedia. But according to that page, he uh, did, uh, he didn't start playing guitar until he got to college, and which he attended, as you might guess from Lansing, uh, Michigan State University. Uh, I think and that's where I think a lot of like his first bit of foray into playing shows and releasing music came from there. His first album came out in 1983, 1990, sorry, ugh, 1993. It's called Songs About Stuff. Uh, it's, if, I mean, hell, if I were gonna if I were gonna make a record, that's probably what I would call it. To be quite honest, um, yeah, he's. It's just something about him that has a lot of charm. Uh, I said at the start, he's kind of a folk artist. I, I've heard folk punk kind of thrown on him. I don't think that's super accurate. And if he is, it's very, very heavily leaning on the folk side of things. He also does throw in some twinges of country uh, and, but most certainly, uh, comedy. Comedy is his big bread and butter. He, uh, he, he likes to sing, whether it's sing about serious issues like cops and, uh, uh, you know, like, being a post grad broke college student, you know, post graduation, and so you kind of think about the struggles of that, like real important issues that, uh, and then you know, kind of kind of satirizing, you know, everything, you know, uh, you know, the, you know, 
like cops, for instance, uh, or when he's talking about a, a, a bar fight at like a karaoke uh, place that's just gone severely out of hand, uh, you know, he, 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 he's able to make work his way around, you know, a story really well I and mean, kind of make it really funny. And that's what I've always liked about him. He has some charm to him. Uh, I will say not everything he's made has aged particularly well. I know, like, again, that, his, that debut record, Songs About Stuff, uh, some of those songs are like I will say what like his, his political leanings are very left leaning I should I should say uh, particularly his second album and on second record and onward uh, you can definitely tell that but it sounds like he wasn't fully there on that left side of politics yet you can hear that kind of on his you know, album songs about stuff you know uh, uh, he had a song called. What was it? Uh, Hippie Lamnant, which is kind of all about like, oh, boycotting is stupid. It almost sounded like he was making fun of left wing people. I don't know. It, it, I don't know what his intentions were, but yeah, it was kind of cringe. But uh, but then you get to like the next record, Welcome to Pleasantville, which is really good. Then <laughs> the song I was a teenage Republican. It is great. It's just like kind of destroying the idea of well being a teenage Republican. And uh, I don't know. It, 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 that, that almost sounds I don't know this for sure, but it almost sounds autobiographical. Just, just based on what I know from the first record, moving onward, I think he kind of used to be conservative, and now he's kind of gone on to singing about how he hates cops, which is yes, a song that you can find in his, uh, um, in his discography. Uh, it's a song called "The Day Ted Nugent Killed All the Animals," which I'm pretty sure I recommended in the rec, in, in you know a recommended section before. Uh, that was in 1996. By that point, he already released four records, including that one. He had a record called Hold Down, 2002, Music for Nerds and Perverts in 2004. And then finally, all the way, but all the way uh, in 2018, very recent, uh, Happy Hour, which is a little more electric based because most of the songs are acoustic guitar and him singing this really weird voice that he has that I love. Uh, and uh, sometimes he'll throw in some like country style, like electric instruments in there. And that's kind of what he focused on with Happy Hour. Um, that's kind of a general rundown of what Wally Pleasant has to offer. He has actually quite a bit of backstory. You can find a lot of, I think the Lansing State Journal wrote about him a few years ago, kind of coming back. Yet he only has like 500 something monthly listeners on Spotify. It, it, it's not as big as I would have assumed because I know I've heard people even outside of Michigan talk about this guy. He seems to have just carried this you know, long successful underground uh, status, you know, that's kind of made him well known uh, throughout this. So, yeah, uh, I, I, I can talk a lot more and I, I might have some other things I want to say about this guy because I, I, I've known about him forever, but I, I think we should probably play a song from him. So, Ben, why don't you play the song Rumble at the Karaoke Bar? <laughs> All the regulars got there early for to sing the songs they sing. The bar was packed to its capacity with guys trying to sound like Elvis, Frank, and Bing. Bess was dressed in her finest dress for she was ready to shine. She was the first one up on this Tuesday night doing a song by Patsy Cline. But then the host put it in and did the very song that Bess had picked. Yeah, you're gonna fall to pieces, Bess screamed. Cause she knew that she'd been tricked. She ran on stage with busted bottle in hand as the whole damn bar erupted. Ready to fight for the song that was rightfully hers before she got interrupted. It was a rumble. At the karaoke bar You best not stumble in Cause you won't get that far It was a rumble At the karaoke bar Tonight Yeah, that's it's not the most... I, I think it's a good representation of his comedy. He, he, a lot of his songs are a little more upbeat than that, although I really do like the rhythm he puts in there. I don't know. Uh, what did you guys think of this, this I stuff? Was, I was really happy to see that you added uh, Mr. Pleasant because my mom loves this guy. She saw him, I believe, last year before COVID hit. And, um, and yeah, and she went to college with him, and I knew about him, and I like him a lot. And I do say he... Rem- this does seem like a 
Ben would like this a lot. Um, and I have to agree with you there. And good stuff. Yeah, I mean, my thing with Wally Pleasant was uh, definitely his his songs that are more political. I felt I was leaning towards that a lot. Um, one of the things I did notice, though, um, I have I've been really speaking highly on a lot of these artists. The one thing, while Wally Pleasant still stands really high for me, um, his way of putting the comedy in his songs, the way of like really speeding up the lyrics, the way of like almost stumbling over his words does get old after um you know like two or three songs and i find myself having to um go to the stuff that's a little um more serious and a little more of an artistic statement than uh listening to i hate cops uh ted Ted nugent killed all the animals and i was a teenage republican all in a row um that's what i really noticed is i don't think that's the right way to listen to wally pleasant like yeah. go go from like one album to the other album to you know like be sporadic with it um kind of like how he writes his music and i think you'll have a good time yeah that's fair again i wasn't sure really how to introduce him to you guys uh you know he, he, he some of his tricks can get old and i will admit some of his comedy is the best you mentioned ted nugent today ted nugent killed all the animals which is still my favorite song of his uh particularly with um yeah and some of those lines don't hit necessarily uh like god you can you can already tell what the song is about just based in the title and there's a line here that says imagine that the motor city madman in your backyard is talking to your cat scratch fever like some of those lines are stupid that was my favorite line actually uh, I, 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 I I, i've never liked that one i was, I was too to whatever but as a music nerd the one that i have always appreciated uh which is honestly one of my favorite lines ever in music and that's why i really want to bring this one up um and when and when the news hit the wire greenpeace activists were crying in their hankies they hadn't heard anything so awful since the first record by the tab yankees mm-hmm. <laughs> i'm sorry it's if, if you don't like you, you guys have to be a bit of a music nerd to appreciate that one i am so Yes, I, I do know how awful the damn Yankees were. So mm-hmm. that 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 is just one of my favorite lines ever, and I still appreciate him at least for that. Yeah, but I, I do hear what you mean, Michael. Some of his tricks can get a little old. I, I like I do like how he like again he kind of like tries to force everything in a melody and he trips over. It. It's funny at first, but after a while, yeah, it can get a little grating. But I, I still think Wally Pleasant has a lot to offer. Um, you know, it, I'm, he's a lot of he's a lot of music he's made over the years, and it, so I'm surprised not as many people know about him as, as he does. So, change that. Go go dive into some Wally Pleasant if you haven't already. Mr. Britton, your oh. last artist here. Yes, uh, this is probably the most well-known artist with a honking twenty-eight thousand listeners, um, and uh, yes, this is Empire. Empire parenthetical i was a lonely estate if there was ever an emo band name that is the definitive one um and uh these guys were going back to 10 minutes north of me and michael uh in fenton michigan this band was started in 2006 by um husband and wife keith and kathy let let layton i'm sorry um they released two studio albums with a sprinkling of EPs. In 2014, they released their second album, You Will Eventually Be Forgotten. But their definitive release is definitely their 2009 debut studio LP, What It Takes to Move Forward. And uh, while they did make a statement on emo and and are credited as one of the beginners of the emo revival movement, they also contributed to the scene by their Count Their Lucky Stars record label, both started by Keith and Kathy, uh, which is still up today and is still based in Fenton, Michigan, which I think is hella cool. Um, it has such bands uh, as CTVT or CSTVT. Yeah, um, I think it's Castavet. That's what you call them. I love oh, those guys. Castavet, Dowsing, Football, etc., free throw those are who are currently on it but they have a great um past lineup because every great emo revival band breaks up like in two years um we have brave brave bird foxing into it over it merchant ships and snowing and uh i think if empire empire's music won't stand the test of time i think the fact that they helped the scene so much will stand the test of time with the lucky stars 
And this is uh, Keep What You Have Built Up Here off that uh, definitive release, What It Takes to Move Forward. Yeah, Brody, I was really excited to learn that Empire Empire is from Fenton. That's awesome. And like what you said about the record label too just blows me away because I discovered Empire Empire like a couple of years back um, and just like, you know, kind of fell in love with all of the rest of that kind of twinkly emo that I did at the time. Um, you know, a lot of their stuff is reminiscent of mineral American football, that kind of thing, but they do really put their own sort of aggression and spin on it. Um, I think, uh, keep what you've built up here is the best song you could have brought to the table just because of the energy that they brought on that particular song. Um, yeah, I, I, I really hope they come back with another record in the next year or two here. Cause, uh, yeah, empire empire is a, is a national treasure. Yeah, I didn't, unlike you, Michael, I didn't know this band before listening to this, and I don't really know if I have really much to say. Um, this is, I mean, I liked it, but this wasn't, I don't think this is necessarily up my wheelhouse, you know, this kind of emo revival stuff. Um, I, did, I love 90s emo, and, you know, some of the emo revival stuff I remember listening to for that episode that the three of us did back in um, whatever season that was, season two, I know. So, uh, by the way, go listen to that one. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Like, I mean, this this was fine. I, I, I felt like I meandered too much a bit, not in a good way. I mean, I know some people, what they like from this, like, twinkly emo stuff, but with, without, like, the flashiness of, like, math rock attached to it, this really doesn't, it's just, this just wasn't really for me. Um, not saying it's bad, but it stretches me. And so from you guys are saying, it sounds like it's pretty influential in the scene that it's a part of. And if that's the case, good for it. But it's just not really for me. Well, hope you come around one of these days, Andrew. Uh, with that, I would like to present my last band, uh, who Brody and I are pretty big fans of. Um, Hell yeah. You know, I can't bring on Dogleg again, unfortunately, but I can bring on the band that gave them their name, Bear versus Shark. Uh, Brody, uh, you can kind of join in on the conversation with me on this one, uh, as far as history goes. Um, all I can t- all I can tell you first is that these guys have a deep uh, tie to Detroit music um, and just Michigan music in general, and um, really, uh, you can hear in the song that we're about to play for you, um, the aggression that they brought to that particular string of emo music. Um, You can hear where Dog Lay got its influences uh, just with that song. Um, Brody, how did you get into Bear vs. Shark? Because you were the one that presented it to me. Well, I will say in the road trip from Fenton, we are not moving far because these guys are from Highland, which is uh, between Heartland and Milford. So these guys are still close to home for me and Michael. I got into them uh, because you and me are big dog like fanboys. And I read an interview with them, I think, with the state news. And it said that they got their uh, song name or their, or their I'm sorry, their band name from the song title Broken Dog Leg. And I listened to their first album, which is like a paragraph long. I can't remember it, um, but uh, I fell in love with that. And Terror Hawk is also great. And I think these guys should have gotten a lot more press when they were popular. And I love these guys, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, so also, that, oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Go I'm ahead. sorry. Last thing, uh, if you liked this band and you want to hear uh, like half of Bear vs. Shark still make music, they are active in this one band called Bars of Gold that released an album last year, so. There you go. So, so let's hear Catamaran. Uh, this one's going to explode right out of the gate. Maybe turn your, your volume down a little bit.
Oh yeah. That's off of Terror Hawk. That's the second album in that first album that Brody's talking about. That's a paragraph long. It's called Right Now, You're in the Best of Hands. That's it. But Andrew, what do you think of Bear vs. Shark, my man? Uh, well, like I said earlier, I think you brought some brought the, probably the best overall material here to this show today. And uh, I think Bear vs. Shark is a, a great example. When I first heard this, I'm like, oh, this is this is probably what Michael's dog leg was before dog leg was it before he knew what the dog leg was. But blah. let me re say that. Um, <laughs> this is what I, when I first heard this, this is what I assumed that Michael's dog like was before he knew dog like was a thing. And it's very, I can definitely see how they were influenced by them. I think are very similar, very emo driven, like 90s emo driven, hardcore. Um, and yeah, this is, this is some really, really good stuff. I liked it. Um, uh, some, there weren't some things I liked, like the name and like the titles and everything. Yeah. The, I don't bear versus sharks. They're really cringy name to me as well as uh, I after your dad. And I uh, just, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Some of it was just like, all right, whatever immaturity, but no, I really liked uh, how this album kind of flowed and uh, kind of, did, uh, by the way, I listened to Terror Hawk for listeners, by the way, I should say that's some back 2005's Terror Hawk. That's what Michael had me listen to. And I love how the album flowed and kind of, um, it kind of like the dips and dives I had throughout it. I think it was really good. And this band has a lot of aggression, a lot of just passion and just fury behind them. And I think it's great. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm just, you know, it's surprised that again, I'd never heard this band before, um, you know, living in Michigan. It's, it seems like they just have some, uh, some like a uh, cult status of about what, 30, what does it say? 32,000 listeners in Spotify. So I don't know. Reminds me a lot of At the Drive-In too, as well. And I love At the Drive-In. So if you're in, if that's the kind of stuff you're really into, uh, I I would definitely give Bear vs. Shark a listen. This is I'm again very happy to this episode because I don't know if I would have known about them without you two. Well, I just want to say that you guys think the name is cringy, but it actually it's 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 proves how much of a Michigan band it is because Bear vs. Shark is based on how the the peninsulas look. The uh, pen, uh, upper peninsula being a shark and the hand being a bear. Also, with the album, the full name of the album is "Right Now You're in the Best of Hands." If and if something isn't quite right, your doctor will know in a hurry. <laughs> it is, in fact, a paragraph a paragraph long. And yeah. Andrew, you're saying you don't like a title like "Rich Old People Say Fuck Yeah"? Hey, hey. No, I don't actually. <laughs> I think it's a little silly, but I mean. I, I think the music speaks for itself. I do as well. Music's great. I'm not saying the the, the vitals ruin it. I'm just saying the titles are dumb. That's all. That's all I was saying. They did but, a they did a reunion tour in 2016. They were on Audio Tree, right? They were. Watch that Audio Tree. Those guys are in their mid 30s to early 40s, and those guys still have just as much energy as any 20 something I've ever seen. Definitely. All right, Andrew. Well. With cringy titles aside, I'm glad you enjoyed Bear versus Shark. And I believe that is the last band we have to share with all of y'all. We're going to skip recommendations this week just because, you know, as the nature of this episode, the whole episode is pretty much recommendations. So, you know, just one final statement on from each of us, probably, to wrap this up on why supporting local music is important, um, especially now during the pandemic. Um, Brody, would you like to start us off? Sure. Um, I think supporting local music, I mean, not only just obviously supporting art in general is important, but music especially because now with the pandemic, these guys do not have a, a lot of revenue sources. Uh, with the advent of streaming, that has cut out album sales, and th that was a big chunk of their revenue gone. Now with the pandemic, live shows are gone and now the only way they can make money is through um uh merch and also other venues thing other th ways things are they're trying out but i would say if you can if you have an extra five or ten bucks i'd say donate to your favorite band on their band camp page and it goes a long way andrew um yeah i don't know like to me like Whenever I think of support, people say the word support local music. I always think of support, support the uh, the artists that you, 
that that need it because for me like my love of music i've always said this well well yeah sure as much as you know the local scene is kind of important to you because it is the one nearest to you it's the one that you can identify with sure but to me i've never like bound my music love based on geography location like to me if a great band exists here in mount pleasant or over in detroit or all the way in switzerland i, I don't care as long as they're good. So my, my whole thing is, if, if, I mean, if you do know a local band that you like though, uh, yeah, they, they probably, they're local, they're considered local bands for a reason because they uh, haven't really hit the echelon where they can, they can be supported by a label or, uh, you know, a, any really higher ups that can help them get, gain exposure. They're not really that exposed. So the best you can do is really help expose them, get, reach, help them reach a wider audience. And obviously, yeah, like, like Brody said, support them by buying merch and donating to the band camp pages. But yeah, for me, like those three smaller artists, like, I, again, I don't, again, I don't care if they're, if they're in Detroit or, you know, halfway across the world, as long as I want to be able to help them no matter what. So Remember your favorite bands that aren't exactly, you know, well known by, you know, even by music nerds. Those are the ones that you should try to help out and stay and, you know, keep afloat if you, again, really do truly like them. And I'll end it out by just kind of highlighting the time period we're in, um, you know, when it comes to what can help a band out the most, it's not just money, but it's, a, it's a exposure as well. And it, as we're living with social media and ways to kind of share our favorite media and our favorite things, um, you know, in a matter of seconds, why not just re repost a song that you really liked by this band you've never heard before? Why not just like give them a shout out on Twitter, even if you have, you know, 50, 60 followers or whatever it may be. That's one more person that could possibly discover these guys. Go to their shows after this is all blown over, buy their records, give them that extra gas money to get to the next venue. It all feeds into itself. Um, as far as local music goes. And that's really all I got to say. Anything you can do to give exposure, give resources um, to any of these bands or any bands you might have in mind, go ahead and do that if you have the means. Um, with that, I believe this episode has come to a conclusion. Um, next week, what do we have lined up? Um, if I know. <laughs> yeah, we, we have a schedule. I don't know if last time we looked at that, but yeah, if I remember correctly, I think it might be music of our adolescence or oh, sure. um, I could be wrong. I, I think that I would either that or nine snails, perhaps I, we, it's going to be one of those. I'm pretty sure. So uh, whatever it is though, it's going to be a great episode. I know it. So uh, yeah, let's stay tuned. Stay tuned for the next episode of soundtrack and any other future episodes of soundtrack. And this is your first time listening. Go back and check our old episodes. They're great too. Except the very first episode we did. That was awful. I can test that because I was on that. Um, anyways, uh, with all that being said, um, anything else you want to guys want to add? If Only you want thing. more Brody, check out the emo episode. <laughs> if you want more Brody, look for him around Moore Hall. I'm there all the time. Yes, sir. And with that, what do we say at the end of every episode, boys? It is good night, Detroit. Good night, Detroit. Good night, Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> Something in the water that all your sons and daughters can move through.